Hello and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm your host, Megan Strong. And you are in for a serious treat today because the one and only Dr. Rella Christensen is here. Dr. Samira Hushiar sits down at the news desk to talk with Dr. Christensen about her impressive career and incredible ongoing contribution to the dental field. Come listen in on their discussion about clinical research, finding the right work-life balance, and more. Take it away, Dr. Hushiar. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us on Chairside Live. I'm Dr. Samira Hushiar. Today with us, we have a very special guest for you. She's one of the leading women in the industry and a true inspiration for many people around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Christensen. It's, it's a pleasure. Dr. Christensen, could you tell us a little bit about your pre-dental background? Well, thank you for inviting me first. I appreciate it. Uh, I started my dental background, believe it or not, when I was 18 years old. I, my father and my brother and his brother lived next door to each other here in Southern California. Oh. And my uncle was a dentist and I started working as a dental assistant in his office. He was interested in getting me interested in going to USC, which was his alma mater, University oh, of nice. Southern California. And he thought I should be a dental hygienist. And so I started in there uh, at, uh, at USC and did my Bachelor of Science in, in dental hygiene uh, uh, there. And that's where I met my husband. So that was good. And uh, practiced dental hygiene actively for about 20 years and was asked to start the, uh, uh, the program at University of Colorado, which was a an expanded function dental hygiene bachelor's level program where we taught the the students how to place silver amalgam and composite resin and to do occlusal tracings and some things that that hygienists at that time weren't doing nationally but they were doing it uh, regionally in some places. I became the director of, of CRA, Clinical Research Associates, uh, not because I was super qualified, but because my services came at no cost. <laughs> uh, and nice. I ran that uh, group uh, and developed the policies and the procedures uh, that we followed there in our research uh, for about 27 years. And then about in the middle of that, uh, had an opportunity to, to do a PhD program. Uh, locally at Brigham Young University. I was interested in microbiology. Wow, that's impressive. And I understand that you raised a family alongside of pursuing a career. And how, how did that work with juggling and balancing the two? You know, that's an interesting question because I'm an old lady, obviously, and uh, we didn't train for careers in the same sense that, that young women do today. I've got to admit to you that I never have found a balance. Uh, I'm sure there's one somewhere, but I've just never found it. Uh, I've found that, that balance is almost like a daily decision, uh, daily choices of what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. Uh, I did rear three children, two boys that are honestly, almost to the day, 11 months apart. Then about six years later, uh, we had a little girl too. So it was those, those three children. So what, what were some of the sacrifices you had to make? I mean, I have three kids, I have three daughters, and I know that it's always been a challenge for me to try to pursue my career the way I want it to, and be a good mom and try to do all their activities, be a hands-on mom. What, what are some of the challenges you had to face? Well, you know, anybody that tries to do that, whether they're a mom or a dad, soon finds they run out of time. And uh, I would say the first sacrifice was social life. The second sacrifice was sleep. And uh, you essentially uh, get along without much or any of each uh, or both so that you can make time uh, to be in these two very demanding areas. It, it is a challenge. Um, now, you recently did a, a conference with um, the ADA president, Dr. Carol Gomez Summerhays, about women in dentistry. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience in that? 
That was a really interesting program. It was actually sponsored by Dr. Bicuspid, oh. and uh, they had the conference uh, in Park City, so it was right in our in our home state uh, there, and there there was a, a relatively small group, but very cohesive, and people from all over the U.S. Uh, in a lot of different areas of dentistry, everything from industry to private practice. There were specialists and generalists and very interesting group. And the, the thing that I noticed is the way they, uh, they bonded uh, uh, quite easily and quite quickly. And, and uh, part of the program was not just the professional, uh, how to handle your patients and materials and so on, but, but they had opened up the program on a more personal level, like, uh, how did you get where you are? Do you like being where you are in whatever, whether it would be industry or, or the profession, and what have the problems been, and how do you make it work? And it was really interesting to see how different women had, had uh, faced essentially the same problems, but solved them in their own way. It was, it was an interesting group. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm noticing the leadership positions for m women in um, dentistry uh, is changing. There are more and more mm -hmm. women getting into the field and also taking leadership positions. How, what have you noticed and seen? Well, I've noticed a lot of women becoming deans of dental schools. I've noticed uh, people moving into uh, to some of the uh, state and, and national leadership positions as well. I think because the women are willing, uh, that helps a lot. and. And they're very knowledgeable. Um, it's, it's been a, an in, interesting thing. I was to uh, giving a course in uh, Alabama recently, and and there was a, a a woman in the leadership there, and and um, she was really doing a great job. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about when and how Clinical Research Associates started, and how it evolved into the Clinical Research Foundation and track? Well, um, it, it started as a, as a solution to a problem. Gordon and I were both uh, in, in academics at the time, and, and we could see that as studies were encountered in the academic environment, when something didn't work out well with uh, a concept or a product, it often wasn't reported, mainly because it was receiving outside financing. Mm -hmm. And at the time that, that we decided to move to Utah and left academics uh, uh, to, to make that move, Gordon had the idea of uh, the fact that he felt that clinicians should take more responsibility in evaluating their own products and it should be dissociated from this system that had evolved over the years uh, uh, between industry and academics. And so this was started with four of his study clubs, uh, the idea of taking on materials. It was really built around some of the studies that we had started at University of Colorado in comparing composite resin to silver amalgam in a clinical situation mm -hmm. through study clubs. Uh, the docs would come bring their patients and they would treat them, usually at night after a day of practice, and then they would uh, follow these cases. And so we used this as a, as a platform protocol and there was apparently a tremendous need because it, it grew far beyond our expectations or plans. You know, we, we saw it as a uh, as a way to communicate among practitioners nationally. But bear in mind, back in 1976, there was no internet and computers were not abundant like they are now. They were big mainframes and mostly used for statistics. And communication was just a lot different back then. Videos and things like that were not plentiful. And, and uh, so basically it was started as literally a, a newsletter. Uh, when you found a problem, you beamed that out to your uh, to your colleagues, and you know they would know what to avoid. When you found something that was terrific, uh, 
uh, and you had to do the science behind it, the basic science, the clinical science. And then we branched out into uh, instruments and, and equipment and, and pretty much covered everything that a dentist would use, including masks, gloves, disinfectants, uh, anything you use in a dental office. And the team kind of got bigger as, as we went. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. And you guys um, started this nonprofit on your own, just you and your husband? We, we did. I'll tell you, uh, do you know the magazine Consumers Report? Yes. Uh, they approached us to help them with some work uh, with tooth bleaching. Oh. And, uh, and we'd done quite a bit of work at that time, early work, with that topic. Uh, before others had looked into effect on materials and soft tissue and fibroblasts and that type of thing. We'd, we'd been into that and I don't know, somehow they got word of that and we got acquainted with them and found out that what we were doing was very similar to what they were doing and our methods were very similar. The way they were put together, they, they are a, an educational nonprofit and so we got the idea to set our organization in the same way. We have an internal review board uh, that looks at what we're about ready to undertake, particularly with our clinical studies. And our policy there is that a patient should leave the study better than they entered the study. And uh, if something fails, uh, then we replace it at our expense. And so it, it's been a good way. We've, uh, we've managed to, to learn a lot uh, about a lot of things. Uh, I think it's probably one of the few publications where clinicians do actually get negative information on products. Uh, if you were to look in a, a group of journals, you would find um, everything's wonderful. And as a dentist, you know everything isn't wonderful. Right. right. And with, uh, I mean, everything you've accomplished is very impressive. What are, like, your most rewarding accomplishments? What, what has been most rewarding in your career? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, um, it's been very rewarding to get to know people in the industry, which, which we have, I have a lot of people that I love and trust. Some of the more enjoyable parts of what I've been doing have actually come now in my later years. Uh, I love microbiology. It's very handsy. It's very exacting. If you make a mistake, you can't hide it. It grows <laughs> and everybody sees it. It isn't like chemistry where you can pour it down the drain and turn on the water and it's gone. Uh, it grows uh, and, and people can tell, whoops, you, <laughs> you, you messed up on that one. If you were to give any advice to the women in dentistry um, or, or women who are interested in starting into the dental field, what would that be? Wow, that's a big question. Let's talk about a, a young woman uh, looking to uh, enter the dental profession. I would definitely advise her to look at the multiple opportunities. Clinical treatment of various age groups, which age group does she like the best uh, to associate with, or does she like a combination? Would she be interested in uh, science? Uh, would she be interested in, in industry? Uh, uh, does she like to uh, uh, marketing? Uh, does she like development? You know, there are a lot of ways that, that a person, be it a, a, either gender, uh, can use a dental degree and a dental background. I would also advise uh, a woman to look carefully at her feelings about uh, the importance to her uh, of marriage, the importance to her of, uh, of children. And I think it's really important uh, as you make that decision to define those aspects of your life because uh, you are going to have to cut up your time. You've already mentioned this balance thing it's very difficult to balance because there's the unexpected and there are emergencies. 
and, and you just can't expect every day to just go smoothly and previously planned and you just check things off and it doesn't even go that way in your dental practice where you actually have a hard copy of who's coming in when. And people don't always come in when you expect them and other people come in because they have an emergency. And so going back to this young woman making this decision, good to know from the beginning the order of your priorities. Um, my priorities were defined at the beginning and have stayed the same. Uh, they would be uh, my God, my, my husband, my children, my work, in, in that order. And uh, I find if I can keep them in that order, um, I can remain calm and, and work through it okay. Uh, but it's, it's a, a constant re-realizing uh, of that. That's my order, but somebody else might have another order. And it's really important. You notice that my work came way down the line, and yet I still have to get it done somehow. And uh, that's when you go in late and stay all night. Or uh, you go in uh, on a weekend when maybe you'd planned a family thing. Uh, uh, people have emergencies when you're a dentist, and you you have to see to them, and that's when the hours start getting really long. I think a young woman needs to know you need physical stamina, which means you have to eat right, you have to exercise. Um, I have found going to a gym to be critical. I hate it, hate the gym, but I find that, that uh, it makes for better stamina. Uh, dentistry's hard. Absolutely, I, I agree with you. It, it actually keeps me sane. Mm -hmm. It's the only reason I do it. Well, Dr. Christensen, thank you so much for joining us today. It's truly been a pleasure and an, you're an inspiration for me and I'm sure many, many others around the world. Thank you. Um, I personally look forward to learning more about your research and how that has been beneficial to dentists and their practices. Thank you again for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Fun. Of course, thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Christensen, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come talk to our viewers. We appreciate it and can't wait to have you back again soon. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Cheerside Live. We hope you enjoyed the show today. On behalf of everyone here at Glywell Laboratories, we thank you for watching, and I'll meet you right back here next time.